hello once again. This is James Routon, and welcome to my social media series on how to be more productive using web technology. In today's lesson, I want to provide a brief overview of a web-based application called IFTTT. This application is great for automating some of your daily activities. It uses the structure, if this, then that. Think of all the things you could do if you were able to define any task as when something happens, then do something else. First, you want to navigate to ifttt.com. If you want to learn more about this application after our discussion, you can come back to this page and click on the Learn More button. Create an account, and once you have signed in, you will see a dashboard similar to mine. As you can see, I have created five tasks and are using all five tasks. In addition, I have created one recipe. You notice to the right, it also shows my channels that I have signed up for. I have enabled 19 channels, which means that I have a possible combination 1032 tasks. If you want more channels, click this Get More Channels, and it shows you more. The ones that are grayed out are not currently active and the ones with color are the ones I'm currently using. To go back to your dashboard, click this little box beside channels. And if you look to the top right, you'll notice my username and three more tabs, task, recipes, channels, and a drop down menu where you will see activity logs, your settings, and invite and sign out. Now let's create our first task. Click on create a task. Once you do that, you will come to a new screen. Here are the tasks that I have created. So let's create a new task. In this part, we are going to create the this part of the task. So click this blue this button. Step number one, choose a trigger channel. If you are trying to create a task that is not in this menu, you can click this view all channels and activate your channel that you want to create. I am going to create a task that when I post a YouTube video, it will automatically embed the YouTube code into my Postress website for me. Let's scroll down the list and select YouTube. Step number two, choose a trigger. There are a certain amount of options based on the channel that you choose. In our case, there are three options. New favorite video, new watch later video, and new video uploaded. This trigger fires every time you upload a new public video to YouTube. This is the one that we are going to use. Step number three, complete trigger. Click on trigger. This is where we choose the that part of the equation. Step number four, here is where we choose the action channel. And for our demonstration, we are going to choose posters. Step number five, choose an action. And we are going to create a text post on posters. This action will create a text post on your posters blog. Step number six, complete action fields. You will find default items listed in these text fields. In our example, we are creating a text post on posters, and that text post will consist of a title and body embed. If you want to change the default values, you can simply click in each field, and a drop down menu called Add Ins will be available on the right side of each field. I usually will leave the default values to see how they will post and then go back to set up and make the appropriate changes. In addition, you can also add your own custom tags. When you are finished and you are satisfied, click on complete action. Step number seven. This is the last step where you create and activate your task. Let's take a look at the structure of the task that we have created. You will see that we have a task that will take the embed code from YouTube and post the text to posters. You can also add a short description to document what the task will do. You note my description. When you post a new video in YouTube, it will automatically be embedded into your posters spaces primary page. Once you have your description completed, click on create task and a new task will be created for you. Note that there are icons that are next to each task. The first icon is the trash can, where you can delete your task if you no longer want it. The next button over is your on and off button. If you click on the button, you will notice that your task turns gray. That means it's off. Click on the button again, you will see that the task is in color, which means it is active now. 
the third icon will create a recipe so that you can share with everyone you will note that the title of the recipe is the one that you created when you activated your task you can now change the title if you wish in addition there's an optional box where you can add directions how to use the task for others note that the action create a post is the same as when you created your task other users can use your predefined action or change the action to meet their desire when you are happy with your recipe click on create recipe and you're done and you have several options here you have to trash again if you don't want that recipe you can trash it if you want to edit your recipe you also have the edit button if you want to share the recipe you can just highlight this URL and send it to somebody so if you go back to your dashboard you'll see I have nine enabled tasks now and nine total that I'm using and I have two recipes that I have created before I conclude this application is great for automating some of your daily activities. It uses the structure, if this, then that. There are three parts, triggers, actions, and channels. There are unlimited tasks that you can create. Have fun. Think about all of the possibilities that you can automate to make your life simpler. Thank you for listening to this video. I wish you continued success. Visit my website, jamesroughton.com. For all of your social media productivity tips and also follow me on YouTube to keep up with my latest videos.